We are here with Erin McGann, one of the three candidates running for District 9, Austin City Council. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. And um, okay, so Erin, this is a this is a tough race. You're facing two incumbents, and uh, tell us why we should consider you over the the people we already know. Certainly, um, that's actually part of the reason um, that you should consider me. You already know what the incumbent's uh, history is in Austin. Um, and so frankly, if you're perfectly satisfied with the way things are going, I would recommend voting for one of them. Um, however, if you think that Austin can be better and can use some changes, I would suggest you vote for me. Um, I am a strong proponent of recycled water. We need to be doing that immediately, um, if not sooner than immediately. Um, our water supply is running out very, very quickly despite our best efforts to conserve water mm -hmm. and if we do not start using the water that we have again right. we're going to have a big sign on Austin that says welcome to Austin bring your own water. Right. Um, we additionally are seeing a lot of um, death of the the trees in Austin. Um, part of that is because of the um, the drought that we're having, um, which is really our new climate. It's not really a drought. I feel like this is what right. we're living with now. Um, and if we ha if we used recycled water, gray water, rain water, we could, use we could save a lot of those trees. Right. Um, I drive down Sandra Murata Way every morning, and there's a whole bunch of trees that have been planted along there that are dying now. Um, and that just makes me sad every day, because if we had a gray water system um, down there, just from that apartment complex that's right next door, we could probably have saved all of those trees. That's a good point. Um, all right, so you have some thoughts about Imagine Austin and whether or not it's a the way we need to be going. Say more about how, how, how we're developing moving forward. Mm -hmm. um, we, so in developing Austin, um, we're focusing a lot on um, density development. Mm -hmm. um, and we're focusing um, a lot on um, the idea that people live and work downtown. And sadly, that is not where people are living and working. The majority of the people that work downtown work for the state, and they're coming in from outside of Austin. Um, either most of them are coming in from north, you know, um, Round Rock, um, Cedar Park areas. Um, and those that do live and work downtown have a great, you know, they have it great down there. But um, the the majority of people come in from outside, and so we need to spread our density out a little bit. I mean, density is. It's a relative term to what we're looking at. And um, we can uh, build some more um, middle income, um, reasonable, affordable. Um, and we need to be looking at the, at the impact that all of this building has on our, our environment. I mean, we, we only have one environment. We can right. put up a million apartment complexes. But all of our, um, all, we need to encourage builders to be using solar, to be um, doing rain, rainwater and gray water, um, and installing recycled water systems in their in their new buildings. We, we purport to be a, a really green city, right. but we don't do that much to make it green. Um, for full disclosure, my husband works in the rainwater collection industry. Um, he's very busy, so my <laughs> running and talking about this isn't going to help him very much. Um, but he has told me about the difficulty in installing rainwater systems in Austin because of the complicated code problems that we have. Outside of Austin, people install whole house rainwater systems on a regular basis, usually because the water is really hard and it's right. kind of crummy to, to drink and stuff. Um, but in Austin, it's very difficult to even put in a small, you know, garden rainwater system because of the problems with, with that Austin sees with hooking it into the rain to the system. Um, they require all sorts of backflows that are really outdated, and the the way that they do the um, the uh, all the code compliance is just very outdated and old. And so if we're going to become a really green city, we need to make sure that our codes are up to um, up to snuff, basically. And how would you provide leadership in that? Uh, we need to completely redo the code compliance, um, the code area, as well as um, all of the... Um, all of the inspectors need to be mm -hmm. trained um, very well on the um, new com code. So, have you been participating in the Code Next process? In I have not that? been. Okay. I have not been um, mm -hmm. participating in that. I'm only doing this basically right now. But the the the, okay. the code compliance department um, has. The, an incredibly difficult job because right. the way that all the codes are la layered on top of each other and and the the code next does 
reduce a lot of that layering of code. It's proposing through. It's not even yeah. written. Yeah. Yet, so. so it yes, and it's supposed to be out in pictures, which I think is fascinating. Um, but one of the basic tenants that we have to put in there is that. A, the employees are empowered to make decisions on their own. They're well trained and mm -hmm. they are empowered to make decisions on their own, but B, that we follow through with those decisions. Mm -hmm. um, currently, code is enforced in sort of an arbitrary manner depending on who comes out to your house and says, yes, this is okay or no, this isn't right. okay. Um, and a lot of people have one guy come out or lady come out and say, yes, this is fine, and the next person comes out and says, no, it's not. I've heard those stories. So, yeah, <laughs> I think we all have. Yeah. <laughs> so those are um, some of the things that we do need to make sure that um, we've got uh, a customer service is our our goal and making sure that everybody understands where we're going with something so okay in terms of customer service uh, access to parks is an important issue that you have some strong opinions about sure yes. Please share. I have very strong opinions about that. So we, our parkland is, we have to keep it, um, and we have to keep it very tightly controlled by the citizens of Austin. Um, I was incredibly upset when the city gave away Auditorium Shores to C3, and it was a secret deal, $3.5 million. They got Auditorium Shores, and um, we get nothing, basically. Um, it, had I known that you could buy Auditorium Shores for $3.5 million, I would have gathered a bunch of friends together and bought Auditorium Shores and kept it public for everybody's use. Um, after the deal went through, there were some public um, hearings, but or public uh, meetings, but before that there weren't. The same thing with the Holly Street redevelopment. Um, the people of the Holly Street area, where that plant is, um, mm -hmm want to have a simple park with some paths, with bike paths, uh, improved restrooms, that sort of thing. And they went in and they talked to city council and they said, this is what we'd like to see. And city council went, okay, well, that's not what you're going to get. What you're going to get is a food jungle, which I still am not sure what a food jungle is. But oh, there's food, food forest. Food, a food forest. Thank you. Food forest. Still don't know what that is. <laughs> um, but you're going it's to layers get... Layers of food growing that, that, that forage. There's forage for animals or people. Ah, gotcha. Okay. Um, and you're going to get retail space, um, you're going to get um, uh, concert venue space, and so it's basically going to be Auditorium Shores East. And I find that very disappointing that the council didn't listen to the people of that area, that what they really want to see there. And we need to keep, you know, we've got, those are the two big parks that are in, mm -hmm. you know, my district, but we've got tons of little tiny pocket parks. Like, I live near Ricky Guerrero Park that has um, the, the water um, that sprays up for the kids to uh -huh. play in, and which is fantastic. And it's just a little tiny pocket park, and I think we need more of those. Instead of building on every square inch that we can build on, we need to increase our green space, which increases our trees which would reduce the, how hot it is. <laughs> right, right. Uh, let's shift to zero waste. Okay. Um, you are a proponent of getting rid of some problem products that are, that are on the market. So I'm really happy with the bag ban. Um, I understand in some parts of Austin that's not a popular thing. Um, I like the bag ban. Um, I would love to see styrofoam go away in the city. I'm, I'm actually still su I'm surprised in general that Americans haven't that it's you know, still here just, at all. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, I just, am, whenever um, I go somewhere and they have a styrofoam cup, I'm like, really? That's really your choice. Okay. Um, so I would really like to see styrofoam go away. And as for zero waste, I would, I would love to see that happen. I know that um, the restaurant industry has sort of pushed that off a little bit, saying they're having a hard time meeting the requirements. Um, for the composting? For the composting, uh -huh. yes, sorry. I, I jumped over that one. Um, and so I'd like to see them you know, encourage, find out what their barriers are and try to work with them more right. so that it, it isn't pushed out as much. And um, I was in Burlington, Vermont this summer celebrating my father's 80th birthday. And um, oh. they have garbage cans there that are composting garbage cans. And they do it by the sun. And I was like, why don't we have those? And they apparently are all over New England. My, my family's from Maine. And they were like, oh, yeah, we've got those everywhere. And I was like, seriously, I've never seen these wow. before. So things like that would be really fantastic to have around town. All right. Let me follow up on a couple other things. Uh, energy. Energy. 
What should we get? Where should we be getting our energy or not getting it? Yeah. From the sun. <laughs> As I was standing outside at the at the climate change um, event this afternoon, from the sun. Um, We've got a, a lot of sun. Um, I was really happy to see the council pass the solar bill um, so that we um, are moving towards um, being all renewable energy. I, I don't think we should, I think we should get rid of our, we should divest from the coal plants that we have. I think that um, we need to, every time the city builds a building, put solar power, solar um, panels on it. Mm -hmm. um, I think that every time Austin builds anything as a city, it should be as green as the most up-to-date um, uh, technology allows it to be. I think that Austin Energy should be encouraged to be taking um, energy back. For example, St. David's Church last year put a bajillion solar panels on, right. and so they have tons of extra energy, and Austin Energy can't take it back or else it'll explode their grid and or shut down the whole world, something like that. And so what they need to work on a way, because this is what we're going to be doing, and they mm -hmm. need to be able to take that back. And that would reduce the cost of energy for all of our citizens. You know, we just had a 7% raise in our energy costs. And especially it would be helpful for our low-income um, citizens yeah. in Austin, because that is where a lot of our money goes, is to air conditioning in the summer. So. All right, so part of being an elected official is setting priorities. If you yes. were to be elected, what was the, and you could accomplish one thing, you could not fail, what would you want to tackle? Only one thing. All right. Your top thing. Your My legacy. top thing. Let's go with the energy. Let's go, let's make it, a, let's make us 100% energy um, efficient, you know, in 10 years in, instead of in 20 years. You know, let's, do, we can do it now. We've got enough sun here. So I'm going to go back to Burlington because I just happened to be there a few months ago. They are 100% um, renewable energy now. Okay. Um, they're a smaller city than we are, but if you compare like, you know, extremes of weather, they've got it in the winter, we've got it in the summer. So mm -hmm. we can compare easily that way. Outside of the city, um, there's a lot of um, unused land um, that they have put solar farms on. And we're in Texas. I drive a lot around Texas for my job, and there's a lot of areas that we could put solar farms, and mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and just things like that, just little things like the lights, the lights on all of the all of the um, trails and stuff should all be solar. You know, we should mm -hmm. just be going all solar everywhere we can go. Um, and I, I think that some of that, at least, would encourage people to look into other forms of energy. I mean, there's. And, and I'm not saying that solar is the only answer because I know every day something new comes up that, you know, we can use human waste for energy. We can use, you know, whatever, sweat for energy. And <laughs> we've got a lot of sweat in Austin. <laughs> so, you know, I, I think that we need to be looking into looking forward in all of our energy choices instead of looking backwards. So again, I was happy with the solar um, bill that passed with the city council. I was happy they're closing Decker plant. Um, I just want to see them, see us all moving forward in that direction. Great. Well, thank you. Great answers. And um, <laughs> people can read more about Erin's answers on AustinEcoNetwork.com to all the different environmental questions. It looks like she answered everybody's question. <laughs> yes, I did. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you.